Every Christian has heard how important the Great Commission is. It's not so you can have a luxurious life, and if you do, there's nothing wrong with that. It is for you to continue sharing the gospel and are working with people who are. And, and we've talked about this many times about how we're trained as pastors and church members to look at differences in doctrine instead of looking at the commonalities of the cross and saying, I can work with you. You're my brother. You're my sister. Good afternoon, River family. Good to have you with us today. Another Pastor Connect. Uh, I've missed a couple of weeks. I'm thankful to be back today. Uh, hope you're watching today, anticipating a word from the Lord today. I have my good friend David Horde. Good to be with you, brother. Pastor of uh, Union Temple General Baptist Church in St. Charles. Uh, I'm going to open up in prayer, and then I'm going to let you talk about Bishop going to be there for a revival. Are you excited about that? We are. We're beyond excited. We just, uh, yeah, like a kid tonight before Christmas. You know, we know, <laughs> we know Santa's coming. You know, it's better than Santa, I tell you that. Amen. Uh, amen. amen. Is, so, yeah. uh, let, let's pray, and yeah. thank you for, once again for being here, and look for a word from the Lord for you. Yeah. Not just a word for the Lord, but a word from the Lord for you. Amen. Uh, God, I just thank you today that uh, that we can take technology and use it to our benefit and use it for your glory mm-hmm. and your kingdom. Yes, amen. God, everybody that gets on Facebook is not doing bad stuff. We just thank you that this goes out on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, Lord, uh, every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, God, we just thank you for allowing that. We thank you, God, that we live in a country that allows us to speak of the name of Jesus and the name of Jesus freely wherever we go. Lord, we may be outnumbered, but we're still on the battlefield for you. God, I just thank you. Uh, Be with us today. Lead us, guide us. We haven't talked about what we're going to do. We're just going (laughs) to let you lead, God, and and we'll just give you the glory. And and we know that we can count on you. Uh, We've been trusting you and counting on you a long time now. We're just going to continue to do that today. In your name, Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. Uh, tell us about the dates. Tell us about the location Okay. and all of that to all start right. out with. Uh, and really quick before I, before I say anything, I just I meant to tell you this before we got on air. Uh, a very good friend of ours, and I'll talk to you after we get off air, but I'm just going to ask everybody to pray. Her husband has been in the hospital uh, up in the U.K., and uh, – uh, was diagnosed as COVID. That's not why I was there, but not having any symptoms from that. But he had a, a, a I don't know if you caught your intestines or whatever, it's a twisting. And uh, we're, we're looking at doing some surgery, and she is asking everybody to pray for her husband. And the Lord is touched, and has, if he's able to go ahead and tolerate food, it looks like he's going to be dismissed without any surgery. Praise the Lord. So I thank the Lord for that. But I, for the folks watch that, that believe in prayer, if you'll just pray for the uh, gentleman and uh, this brother in the Lord. At the, Give us the first name. David, believe it or not. And uh, so that's real common. That could get a whole bunch of us, couldn't yeah. it? But anyway, uh, but yeah, do 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 pray there. Uh, the the nights for the revival out at out at Union Temple are the nineteenth, twentieth, and the twenty first of this month. What we're excited because Brother Lance is going to be here. I, I can't. I'm, I'm you can tell him Baptist because I always say brother. I know it's Bishop Lance, but he's my brother in the Lord. That's what matters. But Bishop is going to be here that Saturday Sunday and su- Sunday night. Excuse me. Yeah. And Monday, and then he's going to stay over and be with us Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And boy, he's got a full book in July. He's got another night somewhere here. Uh, he's got to preach, I think, and then now he's going to be, I think, in Georgia. And so he's a little bit everywhere right now. And we're just excited that we could get him and to get somebody, um, I'd say, of that caliber. Uh, to to come to a little Podunkville up the road and uh, and uh, and preach with us. seven o'clock each night though Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday seven o'clock 
And uh, I'm looking for a great time. We our, our piano player, she does an excellent job, I think. But she's asked uh, Susie. She was a Campbell back before she got married. She's a sis now, but uh, Smith, excuse me, Smith. But uh, she's going to play kind of because they say she's got a lot of talent about doing the little runs and stuff in between, kind of keep the flow going. And we're, we're excited for Sister Susie to come and, and share her talent with us. And then there's another young lady that I'm, I've been after, and uh, uh, she's promised that she's getting her songs ready. I, you might know her uh, uh, her last name. Uh, let's see, what is her last name? It's Mincer. Um, uh, her husband's name's Alan. I don't know if you, I don't know if you know her or not, but anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. she's already got some stuff ready. <laughs> she's ready, so yeah. boy, I tell you, what a blessing she uh, she did for us last time. Uh, came and sang during revival, and uh, I've never heard this young lady sing like she sung that night. Boy, the power of the Lord was in the house. I mean, and and it just got so thick when she was singing, and it's just amazing how the Lord used his sister Kim with the talent that she's got and she's just exploded exponentially i believe is the word they say not just in her talent but just in the in the anointing that you see on her when she sings and so she's going to be where they're with us uh and i gotta say this too uh the river is a great big church and there's a lot going on here and and but uh Brother Howard, I, and that's something else too. I, I mean, I'm, I've known some really good preachers and good men of God, great men of God. I feel like in my life, you and uh, Brother Howard, I remember him, boy, years ago when he used to wear the the sports coats and the little black t shirt type things on yeah. it, you know. And uh, so, and I don't think I've ever seen him any younger. He acts like he's got more energy about him than he's I've ready ever seen. To go he all is, the time, all the time. And I'm thankful for that. But but I, I never knew anybody. Never knew that I knew anybody that was talented enough to write a book, and I've I've got to read this book. And he was generous enough to give me a copy of it. I'm gonna read it again, man. It's a blessing. It, it's on unity, uh, but I, I'll tell you what I found uh, that he's not just one that writes a good book on that. He is living exactly what he wrote in that book. He's living unity in the kingdom of God. He is. For and, those of you that don't have that book yet, you can go on Amazon and pick it up. It's and it's in a couple of local bookstores. It's yeah. Unity Unleashed by Pastor Howard Jones. Right there it is. Right there. Get your look at that face. Get your copy out there. It's great. It, it really is. Now I'm not just saying that. He didn't offer me anything to do this. As a matter of fact, they, they didn't know I was going to do that. But it it I, you read through that and you see. And then when when we get ready to have the revival, and we're blessed enough that Bishop Lance will come and be a part of the revival, and and um, Brother Allen just well here I'll give you his number. I was wanting to reach out to him. He was kind enough to do that. And apparently Bishop didn't mind because I think he's still talking to you. <laughs> so what? But but when I mentioned that we were doing it. Uh, Pastor Jones, what he said, we're going to support you. As much as they have going on here at the river, what, 81, 82 weeks of revival? 81 this weekend. 81 this weekend of revival going on. The Emerge Conference that you had, and I know you're working on another one for next year, and that's not something you just throw together overnight. It's, no. it's I mean, it's it's probably as soon as before the other one even ended, you're starting the process of working on the others. So there's a lot going on. But for him to so quickly say, and it's, we're there. We're going to support you. And uh, to announce, be, I know you said, y'all, we're going to announce it here. And to do that, and then actually to have me back, like I told Brother Allen, I'm, I'm surprised that they even, you know, let him think about having me back after the last time. But <laughs> anyway, I, it, just, it just shows, again, that it's not just what you say, but do you do what you say? That you do, or what everybody else ought to do, you know. So, and I, and he, he, he does. He's a man that that lives what he what he writes and what he preaches. And I know you are, and I know Bishop Lance is, and uh, and like I think I maybe mentioned last time, the River's always been a great church. But there is something when you walk into this building now that you, I don't know. I didn't. It's different. It's totally different than what it what it was. There there is that unity. That you see, and, and I've heard Brother Clint talk about it. How you know everybody just kind of mingled around. It's not this church, that church, this church. It's just everybody's brother and sister in the Lord, and we're here to worship, and and that's the way it that's the way it is, and and that's the way it's supposed to be. On an average night of revival, I would say there's on an average night there's six or eight churches represented. I guess so. Yeah, you know, yeah, and a lot of time, a lot of times there'll be as many as eight or ten or twelve different pastors here. Yeah. 
and and you know, uh, well, no, brother David Brown too. He's he's here a lot of the times when I'm I'm, I'm we've been here. You know, yeah. brother David, missionary Baptist. Uh, this David is General Baptist. We have we have pastors and churches represented yeah. from from all denominations mm-hmm. because that's what makes unity. It is. Uh, well, quit quit squabbling over the couple of little things that we don't agree on, which probably are, are man's doctrines anyway. And uh, and just focus on what we do agree on. If you're a Bible believing, you know, and 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 bought by the blood Christian, I mean, I don't know why we can't. You know, can't get along. Lots of trouble, though. A lot of people don't know anything about being born again. Thank God I was born again. I messed up the first time. Right? <laughs> you know, uh, born again. That's right. A true blood-bought, born-again, yeah. Bible-believing, Amen. walking it out, carrying the cross day by day Christian. Yeah. Okay, that's, yeah. you know, some people say they've been born again, and you can't tell any difference between before and after. Yeah. Exactly. You didn't get it. You need to do it again. There, there's an old saying that I don't remember who said it or where I heard it at, but it says, what you do speaks so loud that I can't hear what you say. And so I can say all day about how good God is, but then if I don't act like it and I, and I, and I don't show him in any way in anything that I do, it doesn't matter how much I say. It's you know you see me out hitting the the bars and the honky tonks and stuff all night long and then I come into church and I tell you how good God is and stuff like that. And no, you're not gonna you're not gonna hear what I'm telling you, even though I might be telling you the truth. You're gonna you're gonna see what I was doing, and and so it, it's louder than what I'm trying to say. So I need to I need to show it. You know, brother Tommy Bates. Uh, yeah. Says it like this: Says uh, if you're out hooting at the hoot nanny and shin digging at the shin dig, <laughs> you need to get right. You need to do it again. Amen. Boy, that's another one. I tell you what, I, I man, play and sing and preach. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, that is a key. Mm, it, Filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah, believe me, it helps, folks. <laughs> it, you wouldn't believe it, but yeah, that's the key. That's the key. I mean, you know, well, I'll tell you what. Well, it's like um, I had a fellow tell me one day we were talking about, and I just seemed like it one day the devil kind of got a hold of me a little bit after the service, and I just didn't feel like done nothing. And he, he came up to me after, and he said, or a little bit later, and he said, uh, he said, brother, he said, I just want to tell you, he said, you know, he said, you can take a hot meal and set it on a plate in front of everybody there. And said, if they don't eat it, said they'll sit there and starve to death. He said, some days they might not eat what you're serving. He said, but every day, said, if somebody gets a little bit, somebody eat what you got. And he said, don't worry about it. He said, you, you're just, and it's kind of like Bill Lance says, you're just a paper boy. I'm just, you know, I didn't write it. I'm just reading it. I'll tell you how important this word is. There's a scripture that I didn't, I, for some reason I know I've read it, no telling that many times. But a lot of people say, well, this is just, this is this is written down by eyewitnesses, and 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 people that were close to the eyewitnesses that saw it, and every one of them that wrote it down was moved on by the Holy Ghost to be able to pin it down. There's yes. no way they could have done it. So uh, there's really one author, but many men that had to pin. But over here, and I, and we talk about you know God, and a lot of people want to knock His word. Listen to this. This is in Psalms 138 verse two. It says, "I will worship toward the holy temple." And praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. And it, and it, and it says, actually, literally t- translated, it means you, that you've, you've put your word above all thy name. Now, I know in John chapter 14, 1, it says that the word was made flesh. So I know who the word is. And it's important that when you look at this, you you got to look at it at the seriousness of, of what this is, and the, and and I mean it's this is not just a book, it's not just a, a something that I, I mean. I based my man. life on this. Yes, I, I, I based not this not just this life here on earth, but I based my life here on earth and my eternity on yeah. this book right here. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, there's no other. There's no other guide. Yeah, there's not. And and the thing is, is no matter how many people believe that that book is a lie, and I mean, everybody could believe it but us, brother. And the fact is, it's still the truth. You, 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 you changing it or you believing differently doesn't change the truth into a lie, just like the lies that you might believe is not going to change them into the truth. 
I, you know, and it just it doesn't change. It's, I get tickled people say that there's no absolutes, and you can ask them if they're sure about that, and they'll say yes. Well, wouldn't that mean that they're absolute in their beliefs? So they just lost their own argument. <laughs> you know, in 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 Jesus's prayer, which what I like to call the Lord's prayer in John 17. Yeah, and and I take the what everybody calls the Lord prayer. I call that the pattern prayer. Exactly. Really, it is because he was he was teaching us how to pray. And that was a pattern. Yeah. But to me, the Lord's prayer is John 17. Yeah. And he said, sanctify them. How? I'll have to find By thy word. By thy word, yeah. I just thy word it. is truth. I'm going to turn over to that because that's a good, that's good reading. You know, uh, that, that to me is the real Lord's prayer is John 17. It's where he's praying to the Father. And, and, and he's talking about the disciples then, and he's talking about us now. Yeah. And and that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Mm -hmm. We are to be one as much as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are one. Exactly. Three persons, one God, the triune Godhead. Mm -hmm. We yeah. are to have that same oneness. Exactly. We are to have that same oneness regardless of what denomination. Mm -hmm. if brothers and sisters in Christ are to be one as they are one. Yes. Wow. Yes. Now, you know, you look at that and... And that puts a whole different level on Christian brother and sister. Exactly. Exactly. You know? And that's truth. It doesn't matter whether people believe it or not. That's truth. Okay, that's the words in red. Yeah, exactly. You know, sanctify, yeah. sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Mm -hmm. In verse uh, 17 of yep. chapter 17. Well, you know, I was looking down here a little farther. It's even talking about, of course, I got a little header here. It says division among the people. Some of them, you know, didn't want to believe or whatever. And then down in 28, it says, then Jesus, then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught them, saying, you both know me and know whence I am, and I am not come of myself, but him that sent me is true, whom you know not. But I know him, for I am from him, and he has sent me. So the Lord even himself, like he's saying, I don't do the works that I just want to do. I do what the Father says. So much, so much in unison, so much unity that you can't separate. The you know very Son of God yeah. who walked this earth didn't follow his own will. That's right. Exactly. And if he and if he didn't follow his will, he 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 sought the word the will of the Father. Mm -hmm. Was well, how much more should we exactly seek the will of the Father in everything that we do? Well, where he sent there, he said, "He that sent me is true." And then later on, we see where Jesus said, "I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life." Yeah, and I, of course, John ten ten is one of my favorite ones. You know, it's the thief that comes to steal. First thing he wants to do is he wants to steal your joy. He wants to steal your happiness. He wants to steal your faith in God, you know, and then kill. And then at, at the last of it, it's just to utterly destroy you. But Jesus said, I'm coming that you might have abundant life. What amazes me is every time something goes wrong, they want to blame Jesus. And he's not the one done it. Read John 10, 10. You'll find out who the culprit is on, on all of that. And, uh, you know, and really the truth the truth is, is a lot of times where the devil gets a little bit of his way, and all this is because we allow him. We give him that space. Once we're born again, he can't do anything in our lives that we don't allow. That's absolutely right. He can come against us. Yeah. But he can't do anything in our lives that we don't allow. That's right. Absolutely. I believe this book teaches that we have authority over him. Mm-hmm. We are to take that authority in the name of Jesus and use it against him. Yeah. When he comes against us, he's really not just coming against us. He's coming against the one that's in us, that yeah. greater one. Exactly. He doesn't even compare. Exactly. The, the enemy does not compare to the greater one that lives in us. No. I, I've... I've, I've, I've kind of, you know, joked with the church a little bit, but it's almost a truth. We always ask for the, the Spirit to fill us. 
well, maybe we just need to let him out because <laughs> if he's living in me, why am I doing trying to wrap wrap him up like you know Lazarus coming out out of the out of the tomb? Why why would I wrap him up? Why not unleash the spirit that's within me? And let 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 the spirit man lead. Yeah. Uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes preached a message uh, and, he, and wrote a book on it, uh, Loose Him and Let Him Go. There you go. Okay. <laughs> you know, if, if you're born again, he's in there. Yeah, that's right. Okay. He's in there. Mm-hmm. But everything else is supposed to come out of us like liver, rivers of living water yes. to flow from our belly. Yeah. I heard someone explain baptism of the Holy Ghost one time. It's like you take a glass of water, it's already full, and then you set it down in a pitcher of water that's full. Now it's in you, it's outside you, it's all over you, you know, and there's nothing wrong with praying for that and nothing wrong for the Lord doing that. But just I think sometimes we live so far below our means because we already forgot who's filled us up inside, you know, and I'm, I'm supposed to share that. I would say that most Christians, okay, and tell me if you agree with me, mm-hmm. that most Christians live beneath their privileges. Oh, so far below, and I hate to say it, you know, I have to watch myself and keep in check. It's easy to do. You read the news, you watch something, you know, and, and so many things in this life. And, and every time you turn around, you know, something at the house needs fixing or something you know, or something. Other. And we talk about the economy. Yeah. Okay. I'm not living on the Earth's economy. I'm no. not living on the world's economy. I'm not living on the United States economy. No. I, my my I, father, my father owns a cattle on a thousand amen. hills. He owns all the silver and all the gold. That's right. He owns the hills uh, on the cattle. What, 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 am I right. wor- what am I worried about this this economy that they talk yeah. about here? You know, he, he says, I'll supply all your needs according to my riches and glory through Christ Jesus. And the Bible also says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or the seed begging for bread. And I think, it's, you know, we do what we're supposed to do, and we, we tithe, and we, we're faithful in, in doing what we should should do on, on things like that. And I'm not saying, oh, you just got to give. But, you know, you got you need to support the work of the Lord down here so souls will be saved. That's what it's a, that's what it's about because the Lord don't need our money. As a matter of fact, if we wouldn't have any, if— uh, you know, if we didn't, I, I, I told the church the other day, I said, you know, I said, that breath you just took, you ought to praise the Lord. I said, because he, he's one that made the air. He's one that he's, he's given it to you, you know. I, I joke, there's an old song that used to say something about uh, every breath you take, every move you make, I'll be watching you. And I yeah. said, well, we could turn that around and say, you know, every breath I take, every move I make, I'm going to be praising you, Lord, because he's worthy. And uh, and he's the reason I I am and uh, and so I think when we get to where we we really realize that a long time ago uh, Nate had had surgery and he was in like a, a body cast from here all the way down to his feet and his legs were kind of out like this and and uh, we weren't able to be at church you know of course on account of that and uh, I had sitting down and written a tie check and back in it was like sixty bucks or something like that and I told. Jackie and my wife, I said, you know, I said, if we had just about an extra six hundred dollars this month, I said we could go ahead and pay everything out for the month, and we wouldn't have to worry about anything this month. We'd be all in good shape, you know. And it wasn't that we were just desperate, but it would have been nice to have that. Well, I hadn't much more than wrote the check out and folded it up or put it in a envelope, or whatever. Jackie's mom knocked on the door, and uh, she come in. And she said, I "said they took up an offering for y'all out there at the church. It was like six hundred and twelve dollars." <laughs> I said, take this check now. Get it, get it. <laughs> you know, I don't want. And I mean, that's just the way God does. That's he, the way He works. Yeah, He knew, and and He said, I'm gonna bless them. And He sent that blessing, and the blessing was already taking place before I even knew it was. I mean, He it was already. She was done on her way. She was almost at the front door when I wrote the check. I, I preached a message here called Twenty Miles Upstream." Wow. Okay. I like when that. when when Joshua. Hmm. Told the told told the camp to sanctify themselves to to yeah. consecrate themselves because tomorrow we'll be going in. Yeah, and then the priest stepped out into the river that was in flood stage before they were going into the promised land. Mm-hmm. The river was in flood. Yeah, yeah, out of the banks. It says. Out of the banks. Yeah. Okay, so they stepped out into the water. Yeah. Isn't it somebody had to be first? Thank and God then, for their faith. And then 20 miles upstream, mm-hmm. the water backed up. Come on. 
Okay. So how long does it take 20 miles of water to flow by while they're standing there in the water? Mm -hmm. But God had already been working. Yeah. Just like that check was already on the way. Yeah. God had already been working 20 miles upstream and stopping the water up. Amen. There you go. They just had to have faith to step out in it and wait for it to flow on by. Wow. Wow. That is awesome. (laughs) That's a great message. He's already working. Man. Man, He's already working. You got a situation in your life. You got a need in your life. You just pray for it. God is already working. Yes, he is. 20 miles upstream. Things are happening that you have no idea what's going on, but God is already making a way. Yes. He's already making a way. Yes. I mean, long before my family, my mom and my dad and my grandparents ever were, he knew me. And he knew what I was going to have need of, and he's got the plan. I mean, it's just, it's amazing what God will do. I, I was telling Brother uh, Alan, I had um, preached a message Sunday at our church, and it was on Ezekiel 16 and 6. And one of the reasons it came to my mind, I don't know if anybody ever heard that or not, but it's it's uh, it was one of the verses that I was told about, and I believe Brother J.W. Harris one that gave me the verse. I had heard there was a verse that stopped nosebleeds. And uh, I asked him because our daughter used to have him a lot with allergies and stuff when she's little. And I said, uh, "I said, what's that verse, brother?" He said, "Ezekiel sixteen and six. I never saw a time it failed to stop a nosebleed. I even had one fellow that worked for me one time. I told him he was walking around. I said, said, "What's the matter, Tom?" He said, "My nose is bleeding, so I can't get stopped." I said, "Well, read Ezekiel sixteen six. And I said, read it three times. I said, however many, you know. And I thought, well, I don't know how strong his faith is with the Lord, so I'm just going to let him read it. And if it don't work, it's on him. That was my lack of faith. Well, a little bit later on, he come around over and I said, how's it nose doing? He's it's quit. And a buddy of mine who was a free bleeder years ago, and I, this is the first time I'd ever heard of it, he said he had a real bad nosebleed. And, and man, he said, couldn't get stopped. Mom packed it, you know. And he said she took cold scissors out of the freezer and put them on my back and done everything and nothing stopped. He said, finally, she got the Bible and said she read something. I don't know what it was. And he said, you know what, just quit like that. And as far as I know, he was, you know, as lost as I ever was, you know, bad back then. We are still young, but we was lost. You know, old enough to know better and, and, and too too young not to try to do anything bad, I guess. But anyway, but I was reading this in Ezekiel 16 and 6. It says, When I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, When thou was in thy blood, live. Yea, I said unto you, When you were in your blood, live. I just kind of modernized it there a little bit. King James says thee. But anyway, God, what God's saying is that when I passed by you, I saw you, and you were polluted in your own blood. And basically, he's talking to the nation of Israel, but he's talking to us too, I believe, as individuals, because Israel was like an infant. And if you go on and read that, you'll see the umbilical cord wasn't cut. They weren't washed or cleaned up. They weren't uh, rubbed with salt as they did. They weren't wrapped in swaddling clothes or anything like that. They basically were laid out in a field, wide open for the wild animals or whatever, you know, to come and devour them. Nobody had any pity. Nobody cared. And I'm going to tell you what today, friends, you, you may believe that this world cares about you, but it doesn't. You may think that, you know, uh, you'll listen to Brother, uh, Bishop Lance said tonight, somebody listen to somebody sitting out in the, in the congregation or listen to somebody out on the street and buy what, you know, uh, a snake oil they're selling and, and, and try everything in the world. All you need is Jesus. But see, this is not the end of the story. While Israel was just laying out there and nobody, we know, you know, she still didn't get the respect from other nations as she should. But this is what the Lord said to done. He said, I passed by. But God, he showed up. He passed by. And when he saw her in that shape, what did he do? He washed her with water. He cleaned her up. He wrapped her in swaddling clothes. Loved her. First thing he says, he covered her. Covered her neck in his. And I think about that was like when a baby's born, you know, you want to see the toes and the fingers and make sure they got all of them and stuff like that. But the first thing that you really listen for is that cry, that sound. And, yes. and when you cry out to God, He hears your cry. He knows where you are. He knows the condition that you're in. And He knows that really and truthfully, nobody cares for you. The world doesn't owe you anything. You may think it does, but it doesn't. And, uh, and so, but. And he didn't owe you anything, but he clean, he'll clean you up. He'll cover you. And it goes on. This is what's so cool. He says he takes badger skin, and he takes fine linen, and he takes silk. And, I, and when, when you, I got to thinking about it, he took leather. Now, he, now you stop thinking about this. He not only just wrapped me in swaddling clothes, but he put me in a fine leather. 
Then he covered me with a linen. And then finally he took silk, very expensive, and a fine linen, and he wrapped me. And that's a trifold covering, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Trifold. Right there. But I'm covered. I've got on a garment. It's on me. But I got the Father, I got the Son, I got the Holy Spirit. I'm wrapped, I'm covered, I'm protected, I'm cleaned up, um, I'm fed, <laughs> I'm washed, I'm cared for. And I, I told the church today, I said, you know, the thing is, as I said, this fellow driving this car drunk, I said, it could affect me what he does. Now, the pollution, we look at that, but I also took it a step farther to look at it as the sin of this world that we get into. Pollution. The pollution, and we're polluted in our own blood. And, and so that tags the sin. I'll just be bold, and I'll tell you what, if you got sin in your life, that's the sin you got to account for. That drunk driver will come across that road, hit you head on, maybe you go out into eternity. But it's not his sin. It's not the blood that he's polluted in that's going to send you to hell. It's your own blood that you're in. And it's your own sins. And so that's that's the problem. If I'm clean, if I'm covered and I'm protected, if the Lord chooses to allow me to go on home because somebody else's sin, they come across the road and hit me, that's fine. The only place I'm going is to heaven. He can't determine my final destination, my acceptance of Christ and following him. That's 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 on me. But I just, I mean, I, I, I actually cried about halfway all through the message when I'm reading what the Lord did. And if, if you get a chance, do read 16. Go ahead and read 16, 1 all the way through 14, and uh, and it'll bless you. Read it, David. <laughs> okay. Read it, David. I'll go and read it. But I, I will say this. If you go on and read a little bit more in chapter 17, you'll see that Israel forgets her covenant with God, but God never forgets the covenant, his covenant that he made with Israel. And they were judged and they were punished but he's, he's here. He's just, that's what's amazing. He's just waiting for you to come to him. He's waiting for him to come back. But it says, uh, at beginning in 16.1, it says, Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man calls Jerusalem to know her abomination. See, Jerusalem at this time had just turned and walked away from the Lord. Israel had turned and walked away. And uh, so there's, there's some bad things coming. But look what else it says. It says, uh, calls them to know their abominations and say, Thus says the Lord God unto Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is in the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite and the mother a Hittite. And as for the nativity and the day thou was born, your navel was not cut, neither were you washed in the water to supple you. Thou was not salted nor in swaddled, in swaddled clothes, swaddled at all. None pitied thee to do any of these things, to have compassion upon you, and you were cast out into an open field. To the loathing of the person in that day that I was born. Nothing to do with them. And it, it's just that's bad. that's bad. That's bad. But there's a new covenant that God makes. It says, and when I pass by, when I pass by you and I saw you polluted in your own blood, I said unto you when you were in your own blood, live. Yea, when I was in thy blood, I said, live. And he goes on to say in verse 7, I caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field. And thou hast increased and waxen great, and thou art come to ex, uh, excuse me, come to excel ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thine hair is grown, whereas thou was naked and bare. Mm. Now, when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, pass by. He can't, there he is. He's passing by. Behold, thine time was the time of love. God showed his love. And this is what he says he did. And I spread my skirt over thee. He covers us with his love. And I covered thy nakedness. I swear unto you, God made a promise to us. And he entered into a covenant with you, says the Lord God, because thou are mine. You're mine. It says, then I washed you with water. I washed away the blood from you. And I anointed you with oil. He washed us, he anointed us, he's covered us. And now he's closed us. He says, I clothed you with a broidered work and shod you with badger skin and I girded thee about with a fine linen and I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments. I put bracelets upon thy hands and chains upon thy neck and I put a jewel in thy forehead and earrings in thy ears and a beautiful crown upon your head. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver and thy raiment was of fine linen and silk embroidered work, and thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil 
and thou was exceedingly beautiful, and thou did prosper into a kingdom. Uh, and I can't help but think here, <laughs> as imperfect, man, I can feel that, as imperfect as a bride or a part of the bride I could ever consider to be for my Lord. You know yourself, when you see your bride come in the aisle, and she walks down the, the aisle, of course, I'm talking about the train, how the train continues to come, and God's train fills the temple. But as we come in, that young lady coming to you is the most beautiful thing in this world that you've ever laid your eyes on. You see no blemishes. You see no imperfections. She's absolutely beautiful in your eyes, and that's your bride. How do you think Christ feels when we come in? That's my bride. Come on, David. Come on, David. We're imperfect. We're, 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 we're bruised. We're blemished. We're, we're, we're full of fault in our own right. And we couldn't pay our way perfect. There's nothing that we could do. But he gave his life to ransom his, just like he sent Hosea back, go buy Gomer. Go get her back. Bring her back. Bring her back. Paid a high price for her to bring her back. Christ gave his life to bring us back into fellowship with God. He gave his life. And when he looks upon his church, when he looks upon his bride, he doesn't see the scars of the past. He doesn't see the things that we did wrong. He doesn't see the mistakes and stuff. As a matter of fact, he's probably the only one that's truly forgotten them. <laughs> and, and he says, there they stand, robed in white, perfect in every way because of the blood that has been applied. Oh, my goodness. All of the junk, all of the mess, all the scars that you're talking about. Cast into the sea of forgetfulness. Amen. As far as the east is from the west. Yes. And you know, it hadn't been there recently. I realized how far that was. And that this is how my little mind worked at first. I thought, well, that's a long way. And in my mind, I could just see the east here and the west there, and you're just throwing and going around the world. But that ain't the way it is. The, the galaxy is out there and it's going, and he throws it from the east to the west, and it ain't ever got there yet. It's still, it's still going. Still on the way. Still on. And uh, so, I mean, and it, but they did, and, and even though they, 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 they got, and this is what sin will do to you, they went out and they played the harlot. And even while they were probably receiving gifts from the ones that they were playing the harlot with, it got so bad. And this is what sin will do to you. Those saying says sin will take you farther than you meant to go, keep you longer than you meant to stay, and cost you more than you meant to pay. But anyway, they, they got out there, they got farther, they got deeper in sin. It got to the point where, and, that, and I, somebody out there, I just believe somebody needs this, you go from the point of, of having the attention, and you've, you've been blessed, God's blessed you, but you go from the point of having the attention, and you start playing footsies with the world, and you get out there, and then finally the world uses you up. Like This is kind of what like Brother was saying that night, like Brother uh, Bishop Lance was talking about. And then the nation of Israel actually were taking the presents that God had given them and were giving them to the ones they were being a harlot with so they would stay. If you've got to buy somebody's friendship, they're not a friend. If you've got to give them things, if you've got to buy all the food, you've got to uh, take care of everything, you always got to drive, you've got to buy the gas just so they'll be with you and be your friend. And when you don't have the money or you don't have something that you can give them, they don't want to be around you, that's not your friend. And that's how far Israel had got. They had gotten to the point where they were giving away the gifts of God. And it scares me today that the church is getting where they're giving away the gifts that God's given them. Uh, nobody wants to talk about the blood. Nobody wants to talk about the cross. We take the cross out of the church. We don't have uh, any of the things that really solidify the foundation that we stand on. And, and his brother mentioned the other night about him taking, uh, you know, a survey among sinners to see what it make you feel comfortable in church. You know, I thank God I didn't feel comfortable. Man, they preached my life. And it got all over me. And, it, 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 you know, God was already working on me. But, I mean, he dropped a hammer when I got there that night. And I'm glad I didn't because I was comfortable before I left because I went to the altar and I made things right. You weren't comfortable. I, I, but weren't you com got comfortable. I was not comfortable at all. And now the thing is, is I don't want to go out of sequence, but if we go back and, and God in Israel, you know, thank the Lord, she got her heart right. And the church today and the people in the church, and uh, we need to get our heart right. Lost people need to get their heart right. But 
God compares us in, in over here, like in chapter 15, to this charred vine. And, and we've really had an extensive study at the temple on John chapter 15. And I read that, and I thought, oh, my gosh. And basically what it says is Jerusalem had gotten away from the Lord. And, and so if the vine, the branch, you know, the vine separates itself from the branch, it's not any good. And it's not any good to be, and you know yourself, you see the vines. You can't, you can't use them for woodworking. You can't build a table out of them. Uh, usually it's a flimsy. You can't even make like a little stob to put something together to hang something on or hold something together. But the vine is, the, the branch is good when it's attached to the vine and it's producing fruit. Jerusalem had quit producing fruit, and it was good for nothing. There's nothing else that 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 that, that branch is good for, except for the fire. To be put in the fire and to stoke the fire, and so it's important now that we occupy until the Lord comes. It's important that we stay attached. It's important that we continue to produce fruit. It's important that we. Uh, when we finish here today, that when we go out, we live what we just talked about. You have to. Yeah. So you have to. But uh, it, it is. I, I just that that message. I just never had seen that that deep before. And I mean, I didn't know. I didn't take time. But if you just, I even underline it. But if you break it down and just look at what the Lord did, and 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 when Bishop said something the other night about what all the Lord had done for David, I thought, oh my Lord. He had done for David about how he empowered him, you know. I mean, he, he, he I mean, he anointed him as king. But he, he was talking about what all he did before he went to face Goliath, and everybody else is standing there with their knees knocking, scared, you know. And uh, because and, they looked at the giant, yeah, the strength of the giant instead of trusting in them, instead of looking at the strength of their God. Amen. Yeah. And David just simply said, "Hey, I killed the lion." Yeah. And I killed the bear. You know, I can say there have been things happened in this life that I, I wish hadn't happened. Yeah, but it's a part of this life. It's a world we live in. It's cursed. We know it, and we know that things are going to happen. Death is a is a, a part of life, and uh, you know, I, and and accidents happen, and a lot of things like that. We won't blame God for that. Well, none of it would be here today if it wasn't for the devil, <laughs> and 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 what happened, you know, in the Garden of Eden. All, all of that came in the garden. Yeah, when they ate of the tree. But I, I honestly can't say, and and you know, while I do, I do blame Adam and Eve, but I tell you what, if if they hadn't have done that, I probably done a pretty good job of messing it up myself along the way. But and and uh, but here's the thing, though, it, I, I cannot ever say that God's ever let me down. There's never been a time when I haven't needed Him. I know one time, boys, new Christian, and I just felt like I couldn't feel Him, I couldn't find Him, I didn't know. And I said, Lord, where are you? And I, I was taking lunch, and I'd run to the little local library and look through some books they had and read my Bible and stuff. I had an hour. And I, I was pulling back into the shop where I worked, and about the time I pulled in, if the Lord's ever spoke to me, and I, I don't say it was audibly, but, boy, I heard it real loud. Psalms 42. And I went over, and where he talks about, you know, uh, why thou just quiet it within me, oh, so hope thou in God, you know. And it just let me know that, you know what, I didn't know what Psalms 42 was all about, and, and but I went right there to that, and, and it let me know that I'm right here the whole time. Whether you see me, whether you feel me, whether you, I'm here. And, and I can't say that he's ever, ever let me down uh, in any way. As a matter of fact, he's picked me up a lot when I want to let myself get down. I want to, you know, get in my little pity party and stuff. We all seem to want to have a pity party every now and then. We do. <laughs> you yeah. know, that's human nature. But we don't have to have that pity party. Yeah. And we don't have to stay in that pity party. Mm -hmm. Because he's better than that. He's more than that. Ron, Ron Cannoli. And I hope we don't get censured over this, but Ron Cannoli said one time, uh, he's a uh, gospel singer. Uh, he said one time, and it was a song he was introducing. But a couple of things he said. One of them he says, if you're if you're if you feel like you're going through hell, don't stop, don't stop, keep going, keep on going for the Lord. If you, you know you you walk you walk in the woods, you're gonna walk out somewhere, and keep walking. He's if you feel like you're catching hell, don't hold it. That's <laughs> that's the trouble. A lot of times, you know, boy. I mean, you want to hold on to it. Why? Because I don't know for some reason or another that you, you think you, you being miserable is part. Of it. No, don't do it. Give it back to the devil. Drop that. 
thing and 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 run to Jesus. I mean, golly, boy, you know, the song Jackie sings, sometimes he calms the storm, and sometimes he calms me. Sometimes I gotta go through a storm, yeah. But he calms me to navigate me through that. And there's a lesson to be learned in that if I'll seek him. And then sometimes he just speaks to the winds and the storm stops. You know, yeah. one of the most popular Psalms is 23. And it says, yea, though I walk through that's right. the valley of the shadow of death. He didn't say he was going to. And, and, and that speaks to our life today. Yeah. We, and just what you were talking about. Yeah. We've got to go through. Do you know that Psalm? We can't stop in the middle. Where it says walk through the valley of the shadow. I just think about shadows are dark and they're scary and they're big sometimes, but you're a shadow. Death before wasn't just a shadow, it was a door. Now it's just a gate I walk through and and pass on into a, an abundant life in the presence of the Lord. A shadow, no, I don't care how big it is, I don't care how dark it is, it can't stop you. It has no power over you whatsoever. You just pass right on through it. it means there's got to be a light somewhere shining to cast a shadow. Give us directions to where we're going to be in revival. From right. here at the river. Okay, from here at the river, if you pull out to Highway 62, turn right, and you will drive, oh gosh, it's probably six, seven miles probably. Um, there, there's a sign when you're coming over the Nortonville Bridge that says Ron's Auto Body's eight miles up the road. I figure we're about a mile up the road from that sign, so about seven miles up. Watch on the left. You'll see a sign that uh, says Union Temple Road and also says Highway 1338. Either one of them will get you there. Hang a left on the Union Temple. It's the only way you can turn. Don't turn right. You'll run into a bank. <laughs> but turn left there, and it is two and a half miles on the left. Uh, I've got a physical address. Again, I forgot to bring it with me, but uh, it'll, it'll stop you a little before or a little after. You know how... Sometimes the GPS does. But when you make that left, go about, like I said, it's about seven miles uh, when you turn right out of the river parking lot uh, and it's be on your left. You'll come up, the old, as they call the old Daniel Boone Hill and all that stuff, and come through the middle of St. Charles. And uh, you'll start, you'll go past Ron's Auto Body, and then when you go past that, really start watching. But it'll be on your left hand side, Highway 1338, Union Temple Road, left, and uh, we're two miles. Two and a half miles, excuse me, out on the left. You'll see us there. Don't miss what God is going to do in Union Temple. That's right. Bishop's going to be here this Sunday and Monday night. Yep. And we're going to go it, just still in revival. Yeah. I still in revival. Yeah. We're going to go from here. We're going to go to Union Temple. And we're going to do Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I, I really, in my heart, feel like it's just an extension of West Kentucky Revival. Um, again, you guys and, and Pastor Jones have been so great to support us. Uh, Bishop is here. He's there. It's it's basically just like, you know, we're we're playing ball at a different gym, but it's the same teams, <laughs> you know, us versus the devil. And uh, Just like us going to Voice of Faith a couple of weeks ago. Exactly. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah, and so yeah, basically this next coming week instead of a Sunday night and and Monday revival, we got uh, Sunday night through Thursday Thursday night revival. Exactly. Hey, we get no school. Uh, how about that? We're almost gonna have a whole week. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? We need it. So <laughs> I mean, my gosh, we need it. But I'm so thankful. Yeah, and, I, and again, I just I just feel in my heart. That, that it's, it's an extension of them. But we've got some folks that will be there at our church that haven't been able to be here that I, I've, I've sent them clips. I said, here's your man. Get your toe, get your steel toe boots on because he's coming, you know. And I know the Lord will use him, and uh, I'm I'm excited. You know, people will be tired. Yeah. And, and, but uh, listen to something that Bishop said. I'm looking. Monday night. <laughs> I'd rather be weary on the battlefield. Come on, brother. Than resting on the rooftop. Amen. That come was... on into church. Come on into revival. Come ready to receive a word from heaven. Amen. If if you've never heard Bishop Lance Johnson, you're in for a treat. Yes. Those of you that have know that he's listening. Yes. That he's listening. That he's downloading. Mm -hmm. He he had a he had something prepared from Acts chapter twenty Monday night. Yeah, he had a word prepared. 
but the spirit spoke to him and he just barely touched on it right at the end <laughs> about yeah. window dwellers. Yeah. But but he went with what the spirit was giving him and it fit perfectly. The, the, the altar was lined from one side all the way to the other side. Yes. There were salvations. Yes. There were rededications. And then after that, a lot of them got baptized. Amen. There were healings in the pool that night. Yes. Uh, there were testimonies in the pool that night. Yeah. Because Bishop Lance Johnson doesn't just prepare a sermon. Yeah. He is led of the Holy Ghost. Amen. He could have stayed with his scripture and probably delivered a really good message. And yep. a lot of people would have said, boy, it's a really good message. But what was needed that night and the results of that would not have happened, I don't feel like, if he hadn't been obedient to the Holy Spirit. No. No it way. Would not have, it would not have had the same result. No. It would have been a good message. I, you know, Bishop is going to preach his heart out. Yeah. But if, he'd have, but if he had not been listening. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't have been the same result. I would. I, that's one time I could say I would hate to have been Bishop Lance Johnson if he went ahead and preached Acts twenty and hadn't afterward, because <laughs> I know he would have got a got a whooping. But man, I tell you what, being obedient to the Lord, the Lord supplied the increase, and it was like Brother said here that that altar was full. I mean. And, and you can count on results when you listen to God. Absolutely. When you listen to God and obey Him. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I just go ahead and say I believe there's a lot of preachers in the pulpit today that are preparing messages and preparing sermons mm -hmm. that need to listen to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Uh, if they get to the well, I'm gonna, I've already got this. This is what I'm going to preach. Well, if you're not prepared to throw that thing away sometimes and preach, just preach. Yeah. Then you need to check yourself. Amen. Uh, I, I, I know you've had it happen. I have too. You, well, you think you got everything just right. Step in the pulpit, lay your Bible down, and you hear that voice say, no. <laughs> This is not working. Yeah. I mean, I didn't even get my Bible open. So, nope. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, okay, Lord, where are we going? You know, what are we going to do? And, uh, and he it, says, trust me. Yeah. Trust Amen. me. And, and it, it never fails. And Bishop's been following him long enough that he knows he can trust him. Amen. And it's just like you can almost see him. It's, you know, sometimes he'll hesitate. <laughs> what he's hesitating on is a download. <laughs> He's hesitating on the That's download right. because right. he can't give it before it's given to him. Yeah. And as soon as he gets it, then he gives it. Amen. You know? Amen. Oh, that's great. That's that's true, though. You're I, I absolutely mean, that, it's, right. It's, it's absolutely just, right. You know, it's downloading into him as he's feeding it out. Yeah. You know, he don't know where he's going next. He don't know what because it's downloading. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that quote, too. I remember that, boy. I just, oh. I'm going to tell you what now. You talk about that, though. I've been in those revivals that have, have went on like, you know, well, two weeks or something like that sometimes. And I, I've i always found I gain strength. I'm not – I don't get tired like I did. If I do, I may be a little tired at the house. But as soon as I get close to the house, Lord, man, I'll tell you what, it just – yeah, so. When, when, you, when you get in the house of God where the <clears throat> Spirit is moving. yeah. If that doesn't feed you, mm -hmm. if you don't get fed on that, something's wrong. Yeah. Amen. It, it, mm, I tell you, it's it's just been. I, I'm just gonna be honest with you, folks. It has been beyond good every night that we've 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 been here. The other pastors that and ministers have spoke. It has been great. Um. I, I just I fed off of all their messages and stuff, and and I appreciate that very much. I know uh, Bishop's been able to be here a little bit more, and a buddy of mine ministered to me today. He said, "I just believe he's a revivalist," and I really I can't I can't argue that point. There's just something. I don't see how he does that. I know, and still pastors the way he a, a, a thriving church. Yeah. 
He yeah. couldn't do that without good leadership in the church. Exactly. He has good leadership there at Relevate, mm-hmm. his home church. He has good leadership there. Yeah. You know, he doesn't like to be gone on Sundays. I, I, he is sometimes, but he doesn't like to be gone on Sundays. Yeah. Well, but see, there's a lot for a pastor to do other than that. It is. And that's where the rest of the leadership has to pick it up. Mm-hmm. And he had told me we when we were talking, he said that he was going to be away one Sunday, which he didn't really like to be, but it, it was going to be where he was this month. And he just said, I just, I just really can't. You know me, so he takes care of of his church. But he's got, especially a church like that and that size stuff. You got to have someone there that's gonna be able to help. You know, and that's again, that's that unity thing we're talking about <laughs> within if, the body. If if you're wondering, well, it's not at the river. I don't believe I'll go. Why? Yeah. Why not? Why 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 won't you go? Well, that's a General Baptist church. <laughs> hey, it's going to surprise you. It's going to surprise you've you. You've been you've been to one of them two, one or two we had before. <laughs> so you know. Yeah. Uh, well, the Holy Ghost won't move there in a General Baptist church. They've been Well, right. I've seen them in the floor all over that front of that church yes. before. Yes. So, don't worry about it. You just come on. I, I don't expect anybody that comes to act any different than you would in your home church because it's the Lord's church. It's not our church. I don't care what the name of the church is. I don't care what the, the denomination is supposed to be of the church. We just love the Lord, and, and, and you love him, and you worship him in spirit and truth, as, as your Bible tells you to, and the Lord will take care of it. It, it don't. I mean, if you run, you run. If you shout, you shout. If you're out on the floor, that's fine. It don't. I don't think anybody doing anything that will surprise me or scare me. And if it does, the others... Until they get the snakes out. Well, yeah. Yeah, we put them up for a little while, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, I, yeah, yeah, if you do that, I might make a new door, I tell you, yeah. Oh, I tell you. Uh, but, no, we don't... No, no snakes. No snakes. We don't, do, <laughs> we, don't, we don't do snakes. No, no. I got some folks that the rubber ones would scare us. <laughs> But oh my! But it'll be a great time. I promise you it will, uh, brother Alan and I. We, I mean, when I've been in church, he's pastoring. Uh, it's just it was always that way. Just mind the Lord, be obedient to the Lord. I, I hate to say this, there's a lot of General Baptist churches that uh, they've forgotten what it was like a, a few years ago, and and I mean, thirty years ago, uh, the churches. And I'm not saying one's better and one's not, but they were loud. They were worshiping. They were praising the Lord. Hands were going up. Uh, they were saying amen. You might see somebody run. You might see somebody out. And somewhere in there, I don't know if we got cold and different or dignified. But, uh, you know, we got to return, you know, if if we want the Lord. I mean, when Israel's in shape, she was the Lord passed by. But a lot of times, you know, the Lord's waiting for us to come back to him. And want us to come to him, and I guarantee you. Uh, well, brother, talking about the night, the father didn't wait, but he the ran. S- he ran, but the son, the son, the son came, was coming home. He would turned around that and already come out of the pig pen. That's right. He done left the pig poo, as Bishop said. Yeah, that's right. And he was heading that way, and the father. And you know, they said that wasn't that wasn't uh, uh, kosher. That wasn't the thing you're supposed to do because he had to grab his, you know, that garments and pull them up. No, but it he wasn't dignified to be it, able to pull up to a take Jewish him. man to run. Yeah, but he did. He did, and 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 so I'm just saying, the the location shouldn't matter. God is God of all. He, West Kentucky revival, just about seven miles west. Yes, Amen. I'm 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 a hundred percent in agreement with that. That's really what it is. It's just going on. You ought to, in, instead of saying I'm not going because this, you ought to say thank God somebody talked Brother Bishop and uh, Lance into staying three more nights, and so we can continue on <laughs> for three more. That nights. That gives you three more nights to be able to talk somebody lost into coming. Yes. to Yes. Amen. Maybe they wouldn't come here, but they will there because we are General Baptists. Shh, don't tell anybody. You know, that gives you three more <laughs> nights to be able to get somebody lost to come to revival. Yes. To come hear the word of God. 
to come feel the Spirit of God, to let the Spirit move on them. Amen. Yes, exactly. And that's 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 what it's all about. And listen, if somebody gets their heart right one of the nights there, if they want to come to our Union Temple, that's fine. If they want to come to the river, that's fine. The main thing is that they get into a Bible based, Bible believing, preaching, teaching church and and you know, attend. That's or faithful. Have to have the body of Christ around them. A new Christian cannot survive without the body of Christ around exactly. them. Exactly. They cannot make it on their own. And it's it's not that easy on us old ones. It's been around a while either. So don't what do what I say that night? You know, forsake not the assembling yourselves together. Amen. We shouldn't, especially as you see the day approaching. And boy, I tell you what, it's it's I believe it's it's approaching. Yeah, but Sister Bertha Perkins used to sing a song. Time is winding up, and uh, I believe she is. You know, don't know when. But I don't have no win. I just got to be ready whenever. Keep your lamp full of oil. That's right. Amen. We're about the end of our time. Thank you for being with us today. Amen. Yeah. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you. I am too. I am too. I'm looking forward to seeing you Sunday and Monday here, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at Union Temple. Yeah. I know me and you have fun. I'm I'm gonna have a good time in the Lord. Uh, I am, brother. You don't you don't have to wind me up when I get here. <laughs> I step in the door well. There up. you go. I, I'm ready. I'm set on go all the time. Anybody that knows me knows I'm pretty much set on go. So that button's hung on wide open, huh? It, hey, it's, it's, it's a brick on the accelerator. <laughs> there you I go. Mean, I, I don't know any other way. That's the only way I knew in the old life, and that's the only way I know now. Way it ought to be, brother. Wide open for God. Uh, Amen. You got anything else before we sign off? Just love to see everybody come, be with us. Amen. The old saying, we'll treat you so many ways. You'll like one of them, I'm sure. But no, yeah. we're just we're just going to, listen, it's just going to be a good time in the Lord. And I'm excited about it. And I get around this fellow, and we get to talking stuff. I get some more excited. I'm looking forward to it. I tell you what, he's a good influence. And uh, always makes me better. Boy, that's a new one. Yeah. Hey. Me being a good influence. You, you swapped teams about, what, 30 years ago or so? 22 years 22 ago. years ago, see. So now you're one of the good guys. You yeah. got the white hat. I'm a good. I'm a good influence. <laughs> That's now. right. You are now. Yeah, uh, I didn't know you so much back then. One, so. one of my, uh, you know, Miss Joyce DeMoss has been coming with us. Yeah, and uh, and then now her son's staying with her for a little while. Yeah, to take care of her. She's got some health issues. And uh, Dudley and I grew up together. And Miss Joyce, at one point in my life, called me the Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Antichrist, but an Antichrist. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I was an Antichrist. Yeah. Because I was against. Jesus mm-hmm. and everything he stood for and all of his people. Yeah. I was an antichrist, but I swapped teams. There you go. And I hope to see some team swapping going on Amen. this next week. That's I hope right. to see some people meet Jesus. Yes. Where at one point in their life they were antichrist, but they get they get their heart right and they get right with Jesus and they're no longer going that direction. Amen. Yeah, and this and this is not about the building, it's not about the denomination, it's not about me, it's not about you, it's, it's about the Lord. It's not about bishop. That's right, not at all. He's just the messenger. That's right. He but he but but he gives a good delivery. Yes, he's good and the Lord is using him in a mighty mighty way right now. And so while I know he's got that connection, I want I want somebody to rub off here. You know, I've heard so many people that aren't full time here at the revival, mm-hmm. but they'll come in and maybe catch a night or two. They're from somewhere else, and and they'll say, "Everybody needs to hear that word." Yeah, everybody needs to hear him preach. Everybody, and and because it's such a relevant. On time, word. Oh, yeah, yeah, and I love the way he does it because I mean he could he could he could beat you up and stomp you down to you feel like this, but he does it with such love because he'll tell you you know I'm 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 not doing it to beat you up I'm not doing it to be mean I thank God I love you enough that I I, I will tell you the truth, and and that's what it's about I'm so thankful that that somebody wasn't afraid to tell the truth. You know, if they just kind of tiptoed around everything, I'd, I'd be, I'd probably be dead, be truthful. But uh, I know I'd be headed for a devil's hell. So close us out, David. All right. All right. 
Father, we thank you for this time together. Thank you for my brother Alan, dear Lord, and I thank you for Pastor Jones and the, the, all the folks at the river. And we thank you, Lord, for the the unity. I know we keep using that word, Lord, but it it, it feels good to feel close. It feels good to uh, be together and uh, fighting arm in arm, which makes us even stronger. Yes. I, I thank you, Lord, for Bishop Lance and the way you're using him and. Uh, Lord, we, we look forward to what he has to say, uh, not only Sunday night and, and Monday here at the river, but Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday next week at the temple, Lord. We just ask you to continue to bless, lead, guide, and direct, dear Lord, help the river to continue to flourish. Bless the revival, dear Lord. May we see souls saved yes, God. before it's eternally too late. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a good day. God bless.